Hello, my name is Tiffany C. Wright and I am the Resourceful CEO. And today I'm going to read an excerpt from my book. Did I say excerpt? <laughs> from my book, the funding is out there, access the cash you need to impact your business. Because I think it's very important that business owners understand, especially African-American business owners, understand that Although access to capital may be may seem to be limited, there are things that you can do to overcome those limitations. One is stop saying that people won't give you money. I can't get money. I can't. Don't say I can't. Whenever you say I can't, it always becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. I can't. Therefore, you cannot. Whatever you speak is what happens. So instead of saying, I can't, please people say, it is difficult for me. Say it is difficult. I, it has been times when I've had people sitting next to me and I've done some angel investing. So, uh, but I will definitely try to connect people who are actually not just try. I will connect people who I think have a legitimate you know, have a legitimate business and are looking for legitimate funds, I will do what I can. But if you sit next to me and you talk about what you can't do, then I'm not going to overcome all your resistance by telling you what you can do. I have tried to do that before where someone tells me, I can't, I can't, I can't, um, I, you know, I can't get a bank loan. And I say, well, how many loan, how many banks have you reached out to? And the person that was a plumbing company, um, owner and he told me two i've reached out to two i said well um there are shoot i don't just in the atlanta area alone there's a whole lot more than two <laughs> banks and this was back in 2002 so before the meltdown and the and before all of these acquisitions of failed banks so there were a lot more banks than there are now but he kept saying it and I was telling him that I had all these banking relationships and I could help him, but he couldn't hear me. He was so focused on how difficult it was and how he couldn't, that he totally, totally couldn't see that there was someone right in front of him who could get him the money. So if you say you can't, you can't. If you say you can't to someone who actually could help you, then they're just going to discount you. It's just not worth the fight. So anyways, <laughs> let's switch to something more positive. I wanted to share with you an example of combining. Sometimes if you need a, a larger amount of money, if you're a larger company and you're looking for several million dollars in funding, you may need to use multiple sources. So maybe a, a bank line of credit, a uh, receivables financing line of credit, um, a, a strategic partner uh, or, or something like that. There's a, a whole different, there's this whole plethora of funding options, but it depends on your company, the stage of your company, what kind of banking relationships you have, what kind of assets you have, what kind of cash flow you have, all of these things that help determine exactly what kind of funding we should pursue and then who to actually approach. So I'm, I'm going to read you an excerpt. Um, let's see, from page 117. <laughs> Can you see that? 117. It, Dame, and I, the names, these are actually, these are actually people that I helped. I think in a book about 80% of the Cases that I go over are ones that I did, and 20% are ones that others around me did. So, uh, but yes, but the names have been changed to protect everyone. Nobody wants all their business out in the streets. <laughs> so I've changed the names of the people and the companies. Damon Daryl entered into negotiations with a partner to buy a food distribution company with $11.8 million in annual revenue. This distribution company was well-managed with great cash flow and profit margins. 
and was located in a section of the metro area convenient to transportation providers. Damon and his partner signed a letter of intent to buy the company for $6.5 million, which included $2.5 million for the land and building the company occupied. Damon approached a direct lender about financing a portion of the acquisition. The direct lender informed Damon that she could likely only finance up to $3 million of the loan. However, as the acquisition included real estate, which was located inside a certain geographical area, she, she thought she could team with a community development corporation, also known as the CDC, to finance a total of $5 million. She contacted the, the CDC and all three entities met to discuss the pending transaction. The CDC confirmed in its interest and agreed to co-finance the $5 million loan. Two million from the, so the loan was two million from the CDC or forty percent of the loan amount, and this is pretty standard when you do a five hundred four, a five hundred four loan. It's forty percent, um, or it's usually about thirty uh, percent from the CDC and ten percent from you and fifty percent from the bank. But anyways, back to my example: forty percent and approximately forty percent of the loan amount and three million from the direct lender or 60% of the loan amount using an SBA guaranteed loan. Now Damon still had to come up with 1.5 million in financing. He considered venture merchant bank financing, but upon further investigation, determined that the direct lender and CDC would place a blanket lien on all the receivables in inventory, nullifying the collateral source for the venture bank. Now that he had $5 million in senior, fully collateralized loans, Damon pursued subordinated, unstructured debt. Or un subordinated, unsecured. Unsecured, unsecured, not unstructured. That's, let's, let's stay away. <laughs> let's, we're not, I, I, I go into different types of funding, but I'm not talking structured finance. That's for larger, more complex transactions than these, okay? So unsecured debt. He approached the owners and requested owner financing. Remember that he's doing an acquisition. However, even after much negotiation and repeatedly stressing the lower tax impact and additional revenue in retirement, the owners refused to buy, to provide financing. Damon contacted a mergers and acquisition and M&A advisor he had met earlier. They discussed Damon's situation. By the way, before I go on, I recall saying, hey, this seems like a good deal, but I know I'm just advising on the finance, but generally speaking, if a seller won't provide any financing, I say walk away, but he decided to go through with it and it actually was a really good deal. So I just wanted to throw in that caveat. That caveat is not here. <laughs> That's the joy of reading my book. I can ad lib. Um, okay. So the M&A advisor, okay, discussed Damon's situation. The advisor strongly recommended that Damon pursue mezzanine financing since the cash flows would support it. This would enable Damon and his partner to retain a much higher ownership stake than if they pursued private equity financing or angel investors. Damon agreed. The advisor recommended that they tie up the target company's current COO in an employment contract and give him 5% equity in the company because mezzanine funds like to see management buyouts or some portion of the management team remain on board. And so Damon did this. The M&A advisor secured 1 million in funding from a, from, a men, from a mezzanine fund. The fund wanted an annualized 18% return. So they structured the proceeds as a five-year note with a 10% coupon. With the remaining 8% expected to come from exercising the attached warrants. I know some of you guys are going, what the heck are you talking about? But for those of you who don't, who actually do know a little bit about it, keep listening. For the rest of you, I explain all of that in detail 
in the funding is out there. So before I launch into the case studies in, to give you examples of what we of what I did, I fully explain what everything is and how it works so that you can fully under, ex, understand the example. And the point is to not understand, you know, when, when you're reading a book, it's not to understand all the nuances, it's to get an overview of the different options that are available to you and then circle back. So first you read through it to, to you know, understand what, what the options are, what's out there and what may pertain to you. Then you go through it and you think about what is your particular situation right now and what can you do? And that's where the examples come in. So let me continue, I keep digressing. I'm here on page 118. Where was I? Uh, okay. Um, so the fund, I'm going to repeat myself. The fund wanted an annualized 18% return. So they structured the proceeds as a five-year note with a 10% coupon with the remaining 8% expected to come from exercising the attached warrants. The warrants were structured to provide a conversion value of $400,000 at the end of five years. So given the anticipated 15 million value of the company, 50, yeah, $15 million value of the company in five years, the 400,000 in warrants would equate to an equity position of 2.67% at that time. So if it's exercised in five years in 2.67%, instead of the 5% that it would take up right now. Now, just an aside here in parentheses, a default on payments due on the note by the company would trigger additional warrants to the mezzanine firm and a resulting greater stake in the company. And that's what you typically find with mezzanine, this kind of mezzanine financing with warrants. So Damon and his partner had sizable brokerage accounts with investments largely in mutual funds and blue chip stocks. Thus, they explored the option of converting their respective accounts to margin accounts instead of liquidating, instead of fully liquidating the proceeds. So after converting to a margin account, they extracted a total of $300,000 through lines of credit drawn against their portfolios. And a business acquaintance of theirs agreed to inject the remaining $200,000 in required equity. So Damon and his partner realized they had not put any money aside for working capital. They determined that the company's customers typically paid in 30 days and that the cash flow gap between payables and receivables rarely exceeded $95,000. They subsequently approached the direct lender for a $100,000 working capital line of credit. After looking over the numbers in the financing package, the direct lender agreed to include a $150,000 line of credit as part of the overall financing package. So to make, so they're basically what happened here was there's 6.5 million required to actually purchase the company. And then there was an additional $150,000 loan. So let me just break it down again. The, the direct lender, the bank, the direct lender uh, came up with or provided 3 million um, of the loan on the on the uh, property. Uh, so it's property and equipment. That's what a 504 loan will finance, it's property and equipment. The, um, so, and, and sometimes working capital. But anyway, so 3 million of that came from the direct lender. 2 million came from the CDC. 1 million came from the mezzanine fund. 500,000 or 300,000 came from the uh, the actual owners and 200,000 came from an investor friend or excuse me the 300,000 came from the actual buyers because this is an acquisition let me make sure I don't mix terms so let me just go back so as to avoid any confusion 3 million from the direct lender the bank 2 million from the CDC the Community Development Corporation, one million from the uh, mezzanine fund, 
and five and three hundred thousand from the buyers and two hundred thousand from an investor friend. And the buyers contributed their three hundred thousand through instead of instead of pulling their stock out of there and you know liquidating their stock up from their brokerage account, they actually used a um, a line of credit against it. And um, and then of course, as I said, an additional. $150,000 line of credit from the direct lender. So that was what? Four? That was, yeah. Although the the 504 loan was one, one structuring um, uh, or, or one component that actually involved two different entities. So that's two entities and then the third entity was the mezzanine fund. Then the fourth were the buyers contributing a portion of the funding. And then the fifth was an investor. And then of course the direct lender who was already in the deal provided additional source. So there you go. So this is what I mean. It sounds very complex, but it honestly didn't take that long to put together. <laughs> it really didn't. It, it, it 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 took it took a few weeks it took a few weeks but this is what i mean if you're having difficulty finding funding the funding is out there it just may take um a little bit of creativity and a little bit of structuring but it's there so hold on i dropped my book <laughs> the funding is out there get the book or if you want to have a conversation with me about specific financing issues that you have right now then you can just you can book a call with me at the resourcefulceo.com slash schedule okay i look forward to helping you bye mm -hmm.